Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by... For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors and happy Thanksgiving from all of us here at the show. I'm Jenny Sialik and we've got a great one in store for you this week. Now we all had an exciting first couple of days out in the woods with cameras rolling for firearm deer season. We'll get to all of those stories in the next couple of weeks coming up here. And on this week's show, we're gonna kick it off by stopping in at the Richmond Buck Pole to hear some stories from some of the successful hunters there. And we'll check in and see how Jimmy did out in the woods. Well, Jenny, my first couple days of the firearm deer season, I got to spend with a longtime friend of the family who in a few short weeks is going to become part of the family. I'll explain more of that inside the story. We did not see a lot of deer on opening day, but we did see the right deer. You won't want to miss that story. We had a ton of fun. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy the wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including the ultimate fishing show, Detroit, at Novi Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars from top pros. The ultimate fishing show, Novi. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. My opening day found me in Mason County this year at a little cabin with an old friend of the family, Ron Hendrickson. Ron is an avid outdoorsman who just retired this year, leaving him more time to spend at this newly renovated family cabin, which was acting as deer camp this week. Well, my brother-in-law moved here from Florida and got into the out of doors and the peace and quiet, and he bought this little cabin here, and it was pretty primitive when we got it, and, and my sister and my wife made it into more of a she shack. We kind of kid with the girls, but uh, they did a really good job. And Drew has got a, a different love for something now. He just loves being out here and hunting. He's learning. You don't have to shoot a deer to be successful. He's uh, shot a really nice big dry doe this year during the special doe season very patient during the rest of the bow season and passed up some a lot of deer waiting for the big buck but um, that's kind of how it started uh, and drew in the last five years went from being my brother-in-law to probably the best friend i've ever had in my life after arriving at camp ron showed me around the property a bit 
freshened up a few scrapes, showed me the blind we would be hunting in, and we didn't have a big deer camp tonight. It was just the two of us. Ron is also the father of Missy, the girl I have been dating now for over a year and a half, who has now been my fiancé for over two months. So to get to know my soon-to-be father-in-law over a fire at deer camp, well, it was pretty special. This one here is an albino that we shot out in the state park. Mm. And I had the whole rug made. It was uh, had white hoofs, and it was as white as you could get. Mm. Got it the second day of, of gun season. And, of course, my dad again. And uh, they're just, here's me shooting an archery tournament. And there's, there's just deer after deer after deer. This here was my dad's hunting license when he got drafted into the war. And uh, he didn't get to fill it, but at that time, back in... 1940 something there was only four deer shot in the state of michigan with bow and arrow four mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> and there was uh a thousand eighty three bear shot that year wow <laughs> so just There's one of my tree blinds out at Gary Swanson's, and this is where we used to have to pull it up a hill. It was about a quarter mile downhill and about two miles uphill. <laughs> it, uh... I'm gonna get a... Not too much snoring up back there? No, I didn't, not too bad. Okay, good. Better than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness opening morning in west michigan well it was fairly warm and as we settled in i had ron talk a little bit about how he got started hunting actually it was my dad uh, got into hunting at a very young age uh, had a little recurve bow that was made in ludington michigan it was a ivanhoe bow uh, made by wishniff and um, used to go out to grandma's house and and chase rabbits and chipmunks and, and uh, shoot them and, and it it just mushroomed from there. Uh, just a great father and son experience. And then got into it with my dad or my son and uh, my grandson and they kind of got out of it a little bit, but they enjoyed it while they're in it. Uh, well, we had a quiet first few hours. After a cup of coffee, things changed rather quickly when Ron spotted a buck. I moved the camera to the correct window to see if we could get the buck on camera and first make sure he was a legal three-on-a-side buck here in Mason County. What is it? I can't tell if he's legal. I can't tell either. He's got to come through that green grass. Right there. Take him. Oh, you dropped him. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, shoot. Put safety back on. Oh, my gosh. That's nice to hear. 
just happened there, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure he came in because that scent came way over to there. Oh, my word. <laughs> Tell me what happened there, young man. Uh, it was uh, just daydreaming, and I looked, and there was a deer coming at us. Uh, we really didn't think we were going to see anything today, and you know, because there's so much shooting on the other side. But uh, I, the wind changed a little bit, and I sprayed some scent, and it carried it over, and I think I drew the deer out of the swamp. That's the only thing I can figure out, but I didn't think I was going to get shot at him. He, uh, if he would have took a couple more steps, he would have been in the swamp, and I don't think we got to track him. <laughs> I think well, he, when he, I, when I first saw him, you said, "Here's a, here comes a deer," yeah. mm -hmm. and then I couldn't tell because he was facing. By the time I got the camera moved around yeah. over here, uh -huh. I could just. And see then my gun hit this, and, yeah. and it, he stopped. <laughs> when he kind of took a couple bounds, I thought he's going into the swamp. Well, he. He gave me just a little teeny bit of light, and, and uh, I think I'm going to put my earplugs in now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about deer hunting is, boy, can things change quickly. From not seeing a thing to buck on the ground. We got lucky the buck had stopped, but Ron made a great shot, and we were on our way to see this dandy of an opening day buck. Oh, Ronnie. Not too shabby. I would say so. Look at this. One, guy. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And some little bumpies down there. What a beautiful buck. Yeah. <laughs> One more step and we wouldn't have got a shot at him. He was close to getting away. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That but thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a nice buck. Yeah, uh, Congratulations. Yeah. I didn't know if we'd get him. There was so much shooting on the other side of the swamp, but... There was a lot of shooting yeah, this morning. Yeah. So it's... I'm happy. Oh, that's a great buck. Yeah. yeah. For around here, we haven't been seeing a lot of decent shooters. Wow. We, uh... The sunlight coming through the trees yeah. down here? Yeah. It's almost like you know what you're doing. Well, it's... We won't, we won't tell anybody. I've shot a couple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a beautiful buck. Yeah, that's a good one. Good shot, too. I don't even know where the bullet is. I don't see one coming out. It must be... Yeah, I know I hit him. <laughs> yeah. What a dandy buck. The morning really couldn't have gone much better. This buck gave us a great opportunity, and we had played our part as well. With the warmer weather, we opted to take the buck to one of the local processors nearby, which was a popular place this opening morning, with lots of trucks in line to drop off their deer. So once we had taken care of that, we got back to camp. I grabbed a gun and the camera, and we got back in the stand for the evening hunt. Okay, so a little update here on opening day. It's about 3 o'clock. We're back in the stand where Ron shot his nice buck this morning. We only ended up seeing the one deer, but it was the right deer. And that's the important thing. So now we're going to hunt uh, this evening and then probably a little bit tomorrow as well. Ron's tagged out. He shot a nice buck with his bow earlier. I still have two uh, tags left, um, but I already have one deer in the freezer from earlier this year. I'd like to put at least one more in, but... Um, so we'll be looking for something pretty big here if we're, if uh, something steps out that's big. We're hoping to get some deer on camera and it's a beautiful night. Still quite warm for November the 15th, but um, we're going to see what we can see. I think we're most excited for the uh, dinner that's going to be coming out to us, not to the blind, but to the cabin uh, later tonight. The famous tater tot casserole, which I've heard a lot about. So we'll see. Uh, so we got high hopes for that. We'll see what we can see, but it's a beautiful night to be in the stand. It's November 15th. What a better place to be than in the woods. We did see a few deer right at dark, but nothing we could get a shot at. We did have dinner for us back at camp. Ron's wife Beth, along with Missy and her famous tater tot casserole, well, they were in full force. And let's just say this recipe and chef, well, they are top notch. How'd I do? Looks exactly. good. So what is in this contraption? <laughs> Venison, 
carrots, potatoes, corn, and tater tots. Wow. Every opening day is special, and as families grow and change and traditions come and go, one thing remains. Whether small or large, home or camper, tent or cabin, Deer Camp is a magical place here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, it's kind of become a tradition here on November 16th to stop in at the Buck Pole in Richmond and check out everything that happens there. It's not just a Buck Pole, it's about families too. Lots of families were on hand here at the auto dealership in Richmond. This Buck Pole event is into its second decade now. Well, we're back for the Buck Pole. Opening day, we started yesterday. Today's the second day where the grand prize is going to be given away. So we're really excited. A um, lot of big deer were here yesterday, so we're excited to see what's coming in tonight. Um, and then on top of it, we just got our whole family fair going on here. You know, I think the atmosphere here, the difference between us and other Buck Poles is we concentrate on providing something for everybody here. It's not just about the prizes, it's about bringing the family and having stuff for the kids to do. They got face painting here, games. We've got food for everybody. We got shopping, women can go shopping. Get your Christmas uh, gifts done. So lots of prizes, raffles, money as always. You know, proceeds are going to the PASS Foundation. So really excited. Um, they got a new president this year. Uh, nice biggie uh, display with him. So it's nice to have them here so people can be educated a little bit more about what that whole foundation is about, why we do that, why we donate everything to that. So uh, Lake St. Clair Walleye Club's here. They're doing their charity raffles as well. It's great to see the community coming together to celebrate our deer hunting heritage. With the warmer weather, there weren't quite as many bucks hanging on the pole this year, but some great ones were here. 24, to, uh, 24 last night, I think we got about nine or 10 registered already today. Um, a lot of unique bucks. Uh, leader right now, over 169. We thought that was a pretty decent score for a Michigan buck. Nice buck. Um, a lot of wide bucks. A lot of wide bucks. A lot of big eights. A couple 12s. Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary. It's about all we've seen is just a bunch of bucks. 13-year-old Owen Deach brought his great six-point buck here and ended up winning tonight's youth division. Um, so I was looking around as soon as I could see for deer and I was sitting in a tree stand and I looked behind me on like different property and he was about 500 yards away just running towards me <laughs> and he got about right under me until he stopped running and that's like when the first shot of the morning went off so I thought he would run away but he didn't and he was like 10 yards in front of me then he saw me reach for my gun and he ran he stopped about 20 yards away and I shot him Wow, were you sitting in a blind or where were you? A tree stand. Oh, wow, all by yourself? Yep, second time. How old are you? 13. Oh my gosh, that's awesome, congratulations. Thank you. Next up was Scott Prusik with his eight point he tagged on opening morning. Uh, I shot this eight point yesterday morning about uh, seven minutes into hunting time. Um, at about 6.50, we saw um, uh, what we thought were two does in our food plot. Well, one of them, as soon as the light came up, I noticed it was actually a spike. Um, and then he started to get really, really nervous. And then this guy stepped out between the spike and me. And uh, I didn't wait long enough. I just saw that the, the rack was outside and he had four points. So I, I pulled the trigger and my, uh, my hunting season was over pretty darn quick yesterday. <laughs> we took uh, this young man out tonight. We saw two six points, but he couldn't get a shot. And then she's been going with us a lot, but she's going to start uh, hunting herself next season. So, but she's, she's ready for it though. She's ready. Ann Palig was here tonight representing the ladies with her biggest buck yet. Well, I missed a six pointer. Well, I didn't, I didn't shoot at it. it I kind of didn't have a shot. So my husband was in the blind with me and he's like, shoot that one, shoot that one. And he was getting a little antsy and I'm like, I can't, I can't because I don't have a shot. This is my first year actually with a gun. What? So yeah. This is your first year with a gun? Yeah, with a gun. I got one with a crossbow, but not with a gun. This is my first one, so. And he just bought me a gun for my birthday. So no that's what I used. What did you use? 
What gun? It's a 350. Okay. Yeah. I didn't I shot his 450 before not add anything. Yeah. But um it kicks so much. So you like the so, 350. Yeah, so awesome. it doesn't kick as much. So did you know this buck was around? Um not really. Um on our camera, I think we had a different one. We thought this might have been him. But he he snuck out. We after I didn't take my shot at the six point. We watched in the field, and there was a lot of spikes. And a couple were, one was chasing a doe, and then two other ones came out. And we were like, oh boy! And then all of a sudden, another doe came out, and she stood in the middle of the field, and then he popped right out. And my husband goes, "Buck," <laughs> and I go, "Okay." So got situated and took a shot. Dropped him right there. So I think it was 130 yards, he said. Wow, nice so. work. Matt Lovelace and his daughter Lauren were here showing off his opening day nine point. Well, I shot him yesterday at around three o'clock. I was actually walking out to my stand and uh, I come around the corner and he was probably 120 yards away from me, had his butt facing me. Yeah, I tried my can call, tried to stop him. And my can call didn't work, and uh, he went about 200 yards across the field and went into a thicket. So I'm like, well, I better go after this deer. So I went around, backtracked. There's a row of trees separating the two fields. So I went about 200 yards and got about 70, 80 yards from when I seen him go in. And it, I was on the ground, about a half hour went by. He wasn't coming out. And then three does came out. One had a broken leg. And I was actually gonna shoot her, and I was about a minute away from shooting her, and I actually had my scope on her. She, I seen her looking towards the thicket, and there he was, just standing there, perfect broadside, 120 yards away. Shot him, he mule kicked, and I watched him run about 80 yards, and he fell over. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I got lucky. Next up was Jake Wilder, who drove all the way down from Gagetown to be a part of the buck pole with his busted up buck. Yeah, we've watched it, watched Michigan Outdoors for years and seen you guys here, so last few years we've been coming down. I shot him about a quarter to eight yesterday morning. Really? Yeah, he was... Oh, well, we were sitting there, me and Steph somewhere in my blind. My dad was sitting down from me a little ways, and he texted me, he said, hey, a nice one just went in the woods down from me. It was too far for me, be ready. And about 15 minutes later, he come popping out at 15 yards and lined up with the 450 on him, and... He ran about 40 yards and piled up. He's He's been doing some fighting or he found a car or something, but yeah, he's got a brow tines busted up, uh, broke off over on this side, broke this one off. And he'd no, like okay. to find the one that picked a fight with him if he was fighting. I've got a couple a little bigger, but okay. this one has the most character. Mike Pereno was here with his beast of a buck that ended up winning the overall buck pole prize. We've had pictures of this buck since September. The neighbors had him lived on the neighbor's farm. We had six pictures of him, of the least amount of all the neighbors, and he showed up on the 14th at one o'clock in the morning, and he was shot on the 15th at 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> we got in our stand at 2.35, and he was shot at 2.38. Really? With a bedded down doe, yep. He was standing there tending a doe? Yep, okay. about 40 yards off of where the camera was where we last saw him. What did you shoot him with? A 450. Okay. Yep. You didn't go far? Uh, about eight yards, <laughs> maybe 10, not far. <laughs> so how did that feel? When you saw him, you knew immediately who he was? Yeah, I was buddy hunting with my best friend, and I grabbed his shoulder and said, he's here. Oh. And it happened so fast. <laughs> Three oh, minutes cool. to be exact. <laughs> oh, wow. What happened to his antler? That was my second shot. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something. Wait a minute. We weren't going to mention that. So tell me about this. Um, I wanted to make sure I bucked this caliber. I wanted to make sure that it was... You almost shot his antler off? I almost shot his antler off. So the first shot did it. The first shot did the it. The second shot almost did something horrible. Uh, or knocked him out, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what a great story and a great time here at the Richmond Buck Pole. Special thanks to Hoovar's Auto Dealership, Commemorative Bucks of Michigan, Lake St. Clair Walleye Club, and everyone who keeps this tradition going here in Michigan's Out of Doors.
Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in the next couple of weeks. As promised, we'll take a look at how Jordan and I both did out in the woods for the first couple of days of firearm deer season with cameras rolling. I was in the K-Pack area over in the Thumb, and Jordan was in the central part of the mitten near his home. You won't want to miss those stories. And good luck to everybody still holding a tag in their pocket. Good luck if you get out over the holiday weekend. Spend some time with friends and family. And from all of us here at Michigan Out of Doors Television, happy Thanksgiving. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By SCI. SCI helps protect, promote, and preserve wildlife through conservation practices, which include hunting. SCI supports and funds conservation programs in the state of Michigan. Learn more how you can get involved at a chapter near you. By Jay's Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hand. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land, I